Hey folks, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the Agilent GC6890 GCFID instrument. This is going to be used for our blood ethanol lab and this is kind of a rundown on how that lab should be set up and run. So let's have a look. Okay, so this instrument is located in SLC 366 and most of the time this instrument will be off and I will come in to boot it up. There's a few things we need to pay attention to which are the settings for this instrument. If you guys look at the instrument, here is the injection port. This is currently heated to a temperature of 250 degrees on a split ratio of two and a half. So it means that we're getting a good portion of our sample onto the column every single time we run this. Uh, right under here is our chimney and our detector for the FID, this little brass dealy bob. Um, that is our back detector, and that's heated to 280, and that needs to be lit. So if you mouse down here, you should make sure that the flame is on. You also want to make sure that that front inlet detector has the gas saver off. And if you've done everything correctly, uh, it'll say ready for injection here on the status, which is pretty much what we're going to need to have happen to get this to run. Now all the controls are going to use are right here on this panel. Most of them are just up in this top corner. Um, but the instrument itself just passes the data onto the computer, which actually analyzes it. All right, so to start this up, we go to the easy start after we've logged in. This program is used to analyze the data. It actually picks it up through this analog to digital converter box, and that should be blinking as long as we have something uh, coming from the instrument. Uh, I always hit cancel here. If you're logging in as a new person, the last user's thing is going to be loaded. And the only thing you really need to do on this instrument is to click the single run blue triangle button, and then we'll put in our uh, sample ID. I'm going to use some 95% ethanol for a trial run here, and I want to make sure this goes to the right spot on my desktop. So I'm going to click this data path, and we're going to make sure that this ends up in the right spot. All right, I'm going to make a new folder on my desktop. Go ahead and open that in the desktop and make a new one called GC. Probably a good idea because all your stuff is going to end up in the same place that way. And then I'll just select that in my settings here. And then I'm going to use some 95% ethanol to start them up. So now the program is ready to actually collect our data. This is our blank chromatogram. And down here in this little yellow box, we're going to be waiting for a trigger to happen from the instrument, which is to hit the start button. As it loads, that should pop up. If it doesn't load, you might want to come over here. If the status is good, just hit this prep run button. And now you can see after I've prepped the run, it says waiting for trigger. And it's just going to blink until I'm ready to go. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to, uh, how to actually inject a sample onto the instrument. All right, folks, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this 500 microliter gas tight syringe and we're gonna sample the headspace of one of our samples. Now you'll have a bunch of standards and some blood samples that you'll want a headspace sample, but that just means pull the gas off the top of the solution, okay? I'm just gonna sticking it in the bottle, not touching any liquid and just drawing the gas off of this 95% ethanol. And then I'm just gonna push it back down to the half mil mark. And this is ready to go. It's gas tight, so we don't have to worry about leakage. But essentially what I'm gonna be doing is sticking this syringe right here into this port. And then I'm gonna push the syringe down and at the same time I'm gonna hit start over here on the instrument. So I'm gonna do that real quick. I wanna push it really quick. The longer you wait to do this, the broader your peak will look. So I did both at the same time. And now you should be able to see that the instrument is collecting data. You can see it's actually plotting out our data every second here. It's taking samples. And we'll wait for this to get done and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so we're here at about one and a half minutes after injection. And we see a massive peak that's come off. We also see a little peak here that's a little ahead of it, off the 95% ethanol. Um, this one is actually so large that it's pegged the meter. And so the meter only goes up to about negative 0.2 millivolts. And so we can see that its flat top is um, is resultant from having a lot of sample on that column, but it's all come off. And our runs only go about three minutes here, so I'll let it finish and I'll show you what we look like. The run is just completing right now, and as it finishes, you can see that it pops up some numbers. 
Uh, we have a peak here at 1.165 minutes that has a 74 integration. Not sure what that is, but it's clear that our 95% ethanol is coming off here at 1.355 minutes with an integration of 3,908. And so the area under that curve tells us how much is present there, especially if we already know what the concentration is. So this could easily be one point on our curve if we wanted to go all the way up to 95% ethanol. But that is kind of beside the point. So now I'm going to do the same thing with a propanol. All right, so the run's done. Be sure you hit stop. Okay. You want this to say ready again. It's going to take a little bit for that to get back ready for injection. So I'm gonna come back over here, I'm gonna close out my ethanol, start up a new one by hitting the little blue triangle. I'm gonna call that propanol. Make sure that I'm still using my FED method. Okay, remember I wanna hit prep run. Free run should come on here. We're gonna wait for it to say waiting for trigger and then we're ready to inject. I am going to grab 500 microliters of my headspace gas off of propanol. I usually go as far as it'll go and inject it back. And again, I'm going to put it right into the injector port and hit start as soon as I am ready to go. Done. Again, we're going to wait for this guy to blow out some peaks, and I'll show you what it looks like when you get done. All right, so here's our N-propanol chromatogram. We have a peak at 2.192 minutes with an integration of 3,898. This one has a short, flat top on it, which indicates that it, the vapor pressure on propanol is not quite as high as ethanol, which I think is a little bit expected, mostly because there's slightly more van der Waals forces when you have extra carbons in the chain. So we can see that we have a new retention time for a different compound. Our ethanol came off here at about 1.35 or so, and then this one's coming off about 2.2 minutes. And so we have two different ones, and if we ran these together, we would see both of the peaks independently. So that run's done. We want to stop the flow. And then to shut this instrument down, the only thing you have to do is go to the back detector setting. We want to shut off the flame. So we just go down to flame, hit off, and then we want to do the front inlet gas saver on. Okay. If you look at the status, it's going to be waiting for everything. Um, all we need to do now is just shut off the hydrogen and the air to the tanks, and we are ready to move on.